One of our biggest strengths lies in the ability to plan processes and to organize pipelines. We have a very challenging project ahead of us, and one of our core strengths is that we've been able to make this as clear and as streamlined as possible. We know what goes where, who needs to do what and when. So for instance, our, our asset pipeline for 3D art, Andy does concepts after getting ideas from, from Vile, the team, from me, uh, and then Andy will draw those after searching for reference material. He'll pass that on to Demu. Demu will come up with a combination 2D, 3D type of concept. Then he'll give that over to me for marketing. Uh, we'll, we'll do some market research and then we'll pass on the finished design uh, after he's kind of implemented what needs to be implemented from the, the research and, and kind of combine that into a usable concept. He'll take that and he'll give it to Sabi and Sabi will then 3D model it. Um, and after we've got that 3D model, it'll go on to retopologizing, um, you know, kind of rigging and, and then on to animating. Uh, finally, it'll end up in engine. So I get uh, the direct requirements of what type of character is supposed to be, like what type of cultures, Greek, Roman, Middle Eastern, stuff like that. Go into the internet, check, uh, check out visual footage, try to figure out uh, visual cues and similarities. Uh, the design ideas are usually um, get supplied by Steve Stewart, Villa Kaunisto, Teamo Norvasto those guys who are basically in charge of the visuals. Uh, once I have uh, a collection of pictures and, um, and tiny little um, commentaries of, um, of researchers and uh, archaeologists uh, together, try to sketch down the, the actual pictures I found and then, uh, and, then put, uh, and then put together aspects from the shoulder armors for, uh, from one culture, the chest armor from another culture and then they see how the sketch looks like. It's basically uh, draw, drawing the, from the stuff I see and then putting stuff together in a, in a later phase. Uh, after I receive sketches and ideas from the rest of the art team and the, the other artists, after that usually then I start refining the concept more, so I will do a bit more detailed line art, uh, possibly some color stuff, uh, value passes, just to refine the ideas and get a clearer picture to Sabi or just to myself for the, for the 3D modeling process. I usually give myself two, three days to finish a high polyscope um, and within this two, three days I try to you know, achieve better and better results. My role is kind of to have the overview because I um, kind of uh, do a little bit of everything type of a guy so I try to maintain an overview of that at any point in the process it's clear you know where it's coming from and where it's going because for somebody who's really sitting down and focusing on like sculpting or, or focusing on texture and something it's easy to forget things and especially as we move, we move on to animation it's easy to forget that not not everything is to be conveyed by the anima motion of the animation alone so that's something you know I will hover around and I will tell people you know you don't need to worry about that because there will be a visible arc there there will be an explosion there blood will be flying out there will be a sound effect stuff like that. so I, I'm kind of coordinating that and then as we move on to doing the animations then I will be doing a lot of the in-engine stuff most likely I will be handling uh, Mechanism, which is the animation system for Unity, putting stuff in there, you know, blending from animation to animation, how stuff works, uh, what visuals go where. I also kind of act as a filter between the outside audience and the team, because sometimes people fall in love with their ideas, and that's not always a, a good decision, especially if we need to change something or if uh, our fans don't like it. That's problematic, because at the end of the day, this game isn't for us. Uh, we love making it, and it's it's great, but it is primarily for our fans. So when you guys give us feedback about uh, our project in terms of what you think about the 3D art style, I then relay that to the art team in a way that they can kind of comprehend, uh, not a way that's going to exactly just destroy all of their ideas and hurt their feelings or something like that. I'm a filter between the, the fans and the team, and it, it, it feels good to, to be able to make sure that the voices of you guys are heard. The voices of people who love the project and who are excited to see this project succeed, it's good to be able to give you guys representation. And that's why I'm glad that we've taken this approach of doing a little bit of market research with every single one of our 3D art assets because it's really, really important to, to know that we're on the right track. My favorite challenge in, in this, entire, in this uh, entire process is, in this entire consenting process, is uh, to create something which looks like um, like it could be from a uh, from an ancient culture but it's not I don't know it's all of course quite challenging uh, but uh, maybe it's to if, if there's a, a wide variety of different ideas is to kind of try to pick and choose which is the best and how it would fit uh, a certain class or a character or a race the best and of course if there are multiple ideas kind of trying to figure out how to match them 
into a cohesive whole so that it works nicely and looks looks nice, looks impressive. And of course, there's uh, the bit from where it goes from 2D concept art into 3D. There is always some concept in, in that phase as well because some ideas that work in 2D or in our heads might not work in 3D. Uh, so there's a bit of a challenge there as well when it moves to a, a three-dimensional. It's It feels obvious that if something works on paper it feels like well yeah I mean of course this is gonna work in, in 3d as well or we have a cool idea for this armor but there's things that you don't take into account when you're drawing stuff that you have to kind of there are problems to solve when you turn it to 3d there might be areas that of of the armor or the character that's kind of neglected in the design process or not a little bit like glossed over so those might be issue areas in 3d and you have to figure out like suddenly you run into this thing that oh suddenly this doesn't actually look very nice and and i have to kind of change this and then you have to do some designing on the fly as well i think the biggest challenge has been so far the fact that we are kind of merging two teams together and we are merging people various skill levels together and we are still trying to figure out how this all works and where the authority is i've only recently started to realize that there hasn't historically really been a central authority uh, in this game in regards to the visuals. There needs to be some little dictator dude who ultimately in the end gets to have a little hammer and go like bam, you know, this is how we do it. Uh, there has been examples where the concepts were not that finalized and there, there were still a couple of ideas out there uh, and I just started to sculpt and it was a little bit messy because uh, because you know people were uh, still giving feedback and the ideas were not concrete. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the, with, the, with the field I'm working in. It's, it's kind of, you know, when you walk past by my screen, there is always something cool happening. It's either a high poise cut or, or some, uh, some animation or, or something that is, you know, just attractive. And, and I like uh, to be in the position where, where people can stand up, you know, stretch their legs, come to my screen and say, hey, that's cool, you know, um, I like that character. How is it going to animate? Why is it? not yellow instead of red and that's how it feels for me too I'm, I'm basically almost playing my my game there when I'm when I'm modeling and sculpting and animating it's fun